Now on 7 News at noon, a boil water advisory is causing problems all across one county in the upstate. Closing schools and offices were live with the latest. And a former upstate pastor resigns from the Southern Baptist Convention over what he calls a morally inappropriate relationship. Now here's Malachi with your forecast first. All right, our Wednesday afternoon includes mostly cloudy skies, but warm temperatures. We're already in the mid 60s in the upstate, low to mid 60s as well in western North Carolina, but the clouds are staying with us. We'll stay mostly cloudy through the afternoon, and temperatures today back to the 70s. 73 in the upstate, low 70s in the mountains, and we we'll expect to see a chance of rain over the next couple of days. I'll have a very latest on that coming up in our seven day forecast. Seven News at Noon starts now. Covering local news first for Carolina's family. This is 7 News at Noon. Good afternoon. I'm Fred Cunningham. And I'm Sabila Vargas. Thanks so much for joining us. We start with continuing coverage of a line break at a water treatment plant that is causing some huge headaches in Gaffney. Schools in Cherokee County were forced to cancel this morning, and a boil water advisory has been issued for Gaffney Board of Public Works customers. Kimberly Brown is at Limestone College campus with what you need to know. Kim? Well, you know what? Absolutely, you're right. This water line break causing havoc for a lot of people across Cherokee County. On the campus here at Limestone, no water means no classes for those students, and they're probably a little happy about that. But the body of water behind me, take a look at this. This water is serving as a source for the community just in case they need it. If you look a little further in the distance, there's a fire truck there, has large hoses running into the quarry. Gaffney Fire Department pumping that water out just in case they need it. Now back here on campus, Campus. I'm with Charles Wyatt, communications director or VP of communications, I should say. Now you had to send out an email to tell the students that the classes were canceled, but tell me a little bit about why you canceled the classes and yeah. what you guys are looking at. Sure, and uh, no gnashing of teeth from the students. They're very happy about it. Student, faculty and staff, uh, not so much. But yeah, we wanted to get uh, uh, that pressure from the system away as far as our faculty and our staff, even our students, uh, get them out of our buildings uh, because it's not just affecting our, our campus, but across the community. So anything that we can do to get the kids out of the buildings and reduce that water pressure, uh, we definitely want to do that. Now, how long do you think the classes will be canceled and what have you told the students so far? So far, uh, no classes today. Uh, faculty and staff have gone home for the most part, except for essential personnel. We've got to feed our students and things like that. Uh, we may be out tomorrow. Not real sure yet. The Gaffney Board of Public Works hasn't communicated that to us, but we do understand there may be a likelihood we'll be out tomorrow as well. And obviously you have ch uh, campus, children who live on campus, yes. and so what are you doing to help them out? Yeah, and as a matter of fact, you mentioned the uh, the fire truck that's here on campus. Uh, our student services department have worked out a deal with them that uh, if you have some containers and you need to re refill your toilet tank, uh, bring the containers down. The uh, fire department's going to provide that to our students. And then our uh, dining hall that you see behind you, uh, we do have a filtration system, and, and thankfully they do still have water pressure. Uh, and we do have, of course, soft drinks and bottled water and those things. So uh, the main thing is safety of the students. Number two, keep them fed. All right. All well, right. you guys have answered, dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. Hey, we're here to help uh, not just our students, but here to help the community. And we're proud that the uh, Gaffney uh, Fire Department's out here. And anything we do to help the community, that's what we're here for. Good deal. Thank you Thank so much you so for much, your Kim. time. Appreciate it. All right. Well, here again at Limestone College, just want to make a, a note for you, those of you who are watching at home, Cherokee County government offices closed. Gaffney City Hall closed. If you have an appointment, it might be wise to make a call before you head out to make sure they're still open. In the meantime, I'm reporting live from the campus of Limestone College, Kimberly Brown, 7 News. Kim, I know you'll keep us posted. Thank you. A South Carolina public servant has passed away today. First responders across the county coming together to remember Dean Douglas, an EMS worker who traveled across the southeast, showing up for others in their darkest hour while fighting his own battle. 7 News' is Aaron Rogers live with how police are preparing for this procession. Aaron. Well, Fred, if you take a look, you can see all of the fire trucks that have already lined up for this procession that's supposed to happen in just about an hour. But this pink truck honoring those who've had cancer is the one leading the way. And even Dean Douglas just signed it a few weeks ago. Now, this is part of the procession after Dean Douglas passed away. He was one that was um, played the bagpipes while uh, during line of duty deaths. He was also on the SWAT team as a paramedic and he had recently started treatments for throat cancer. Today, some of the people he worked with the most 
are now holding a procession in his honor. Like I said at the beginning, this procession will start at 1. While they are doing this, they will be blocking off some intersections like the one straight ahead. We will have much more on the story and procession tonight at 5 and 6. Live in Greenville, I'm Aaron Rogers, 7 News. All right, Aaron, thank you. We want to get some breaking news out of Lexington County right now. Interstate 26 is shut down between exits 113 and 115 because of an armed subject or person refusing to get out of his car. That is according to Sheriff's Twitter. Westbound traffic on I-26 is being diverted to I-77. Eastbound traffic on I-26 is being diverted onto Highway 302. We will bring you updates as we learn more about what's happening. A state funeral is happening today in Atlanta for former Georgia Governor and U.S. Senator Zell Miller. He died Friday at his old family home in the North Georgia mountain town of Young Harris. He started his long career there in City Hall. Former Presidents Bill Clinton, George W. Bush and Jimmy Carter attended a service that was held yesterday. Miller was 86. He served two terms as Georgia Governor starting in 1991 and was appointed to the Senate in 2000. We are working to find out more information about a death investigation involving a Union County government employee. It happened on Glendale Road in Union. Union police and the Union County Sheriff's Office have asked state law enforcement to step in. The Union County coroner confirmed the investigation was about an employee, but did not release that person's name or how they died. And we're going to let you know as soon as we know more information. New body camera video has been released showing the moments a volunteer officer shoots and injures a South Carolina driver. A warning, this video is graphic. I need you to step out of the car. Stop, 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 stop. Shots fired, shots fired. Florence police say the driver refused to get out of his car Saturday after they said he smelled of marijuana. We're told the driver put it in reverse and hit a police cruiser. That's when the constable fired his gun. Law enforcement officers are normally discouraged from shooting at moving cars because they are hard targets to hit and bullets can strike others. The solicitor plans to review the evidence to decide if any charges should be filed. The driver was released from a hospital on Monday. A former upstate pastor has resigned from the Southern Baptist Convention over, quote, a morally inappropriate relationship in the recent past. The Baptist Press reports Frank S. Page resigned yesterday. Page was chief executive officer of the convention's executive committee. He said in a statement that he had embarrassed his family, his Lord, and himself, but didn't give a complete explanation. Page served as pastor of First Baptist Church in Taylor's before he was named SBC president in 2006. All 22 women serving in the U.S. Senate, both Democrats and Republicans, are calling for a vote on congressional sexual harassment legislation. In a letter to leadership, the women say that they have deep disappointment in the lack of action in the Senate. The bill updates the current law by streamlining the process to report sexual harassment. It also has new ways to help staffers file complaints. There have been little progress since the House lawmakers passed the bill two months ago. Coming up next at 7 News at noon, North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un meets with China's president and President Trump goes to Twitter to say what he thinks it could mean for U.S. relations with the North.